Good morning! Isang magandang Wednesday morning po sa ating lahat. Welcome in our bread and breakfast. Today, we continue to learn and accumulate ourselves with more of the wisdom of God as we study in the book of Proverbs. And now we are in chapter 18. Yesterday, we talked about one can be wise by pursuing relationship because God really desires us to really pursue relationship in our lives. And even us here in 601, we have a core value relationship before ministry. Relationship really matters most in whatever we do, wherever we are, anuman po ang nais po natin gawin sa buhay. We cannot remove relationship. Okay, kung gaano po ka-importante ang pakikipagrelasyon. And today, in chapter 18, we come to know how we could really be in a relationship. How can we relate to each other? How can we really enter into a good relationship? Okay? Uh, because most of the time, it is not easy for us to build relationship. Amen. Because, you know, when we say relationship, we're not just talking about the people we already know but how we can connect to each other. Like say, for example, in the school or in the workplace, even when you're new in the church, we're new in, in an organization or in a group. Napaka-importante po that we, we really understand the importance of relationship and how could we build good relationship po. In chapter 18, it tells us, and I entitled this chapter, I titled this chapter, Be Humble and Integrate Ourselves. Be humble and integrate ourselves. Because it is when we don't know how to integrate ourselves that relationships are broken. Ito po ang sumisira sa relasyon or it even um, destroys relationship even before we can start it. Okay, so so verse 1, sabi po dito, An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrel. Now, what really destroys relationship is that when we become unfriendly, when we have the challenge and the difficulty to befriend others, you see, being unfriendly ay ito po yung isa sa bagay po na challenge po natin to get to relate to others. And what is being unfriendly? Okay, sabi dito an unfriendly person pursues selfish ends. Now in other translation, it says whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire and he breaks out against all sound judgment. This is the ESV version. Okay, sabi po dito, an unfriendly person usually isolate himself. Now, first point, do not be unfriendly and segregate ourselves. Why? Because when we begin to be unfriendly, it is not easy for us to connect with people. Not because we have problems in our speech, but it's not about a problem on how we, we communicate. But it's still a problem of our heart and our mindset. Okay? Why we are being unfriendly, it's because we, we love to be on our own. Okay? We isolate ourselves. And some people think this is introversion. Pero iba po yung introversion. Okay? Because some are an introvert person, they can still build relationship. Yeah? But an unfriendly person, they pursue selfish ends or they isolate themselves. Why? Because they only think of themselves. It is not easy for them to start a conversation or to stay in a conversation dahil nga po, sabi po sa ESV version, he breaks out against all sound judgment. He is unwilling to connect and speak and communicate because he is unwilling to listen to others. He is selfish. It is what the Bible says. The people who are unfriendly is selfish because they get to think that their own and their only idea, their idea is the only one that is right. Yung, yung kanilang pag-iisip, nais po nila na lahat dapat ito ang pag-iisip. 
Okay? So it is not easy for them to enter in a conversation, especially when there begins a sharing of ideas. Okay? Because they solely believe na ang kanilang iniisip or what they believe in, ito lang po yung taba. They always stand on what is right and what is wrong. And they always stand in the tree of good and evil. Okay? Most of the time, they are unwilling to listen. Dahil nga po, what they think is, yung, yung idea po nila, yun lang. It is above all any ideas. And they break out against all sound judgment. They, they don't want to listen to anybody. They don't want to listen to anyone. They won't entertain any suggestion. They will not entertain any comments or anything. And they just want to isolate themselves. Because in isolation, it is easier. It is easier. You will always be right. When they are being unfriendly and isolate themselves, they don't get to deal and to think of what others think, what others feel. And they would only think of themselves. They are bound in satisfac satisfying their own needs, satisfying themselves. Kaya po, sabi din po dito that the, the, the words of the fools, they, they are being satisfied. Okay, in verse 20, sabi po, From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled with the harvest of their lips. They are satisfied. They're just satisfied with them knowing na, okay, ito to, this is what is right, this is what is wrong, and nothing more, and others are wrong. Most of the time, this is how we think. And so, we begin to isolate ourselves and segregate ourselves from others. We will not think, ano kaya ang masasabi nila? What do they think about these kinds of things? What do they think about my decision? An unfriendly person usually would be on their own. They love to stay on their own. And this also limits them in growing. It limits us from, from developing ourselves, from enlarging our capacity, from enlarging our vessels, because we are unwilling to learn from others. We come to see in verse 2, Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. See? They only, they only want their own opinion. They're not interested to listen to others because they're not delighted in it. They find no pleasure in trying to understand things. When you say understand, well, we want to understand things. We want to hear what others say. Yeah, we want to be enlightened. We want to, to know the truth about it. But when we stand on what we only believe, it is not easy. Even us as Christians. Why we still mingle in the world? It is because we get to know what these other people feel. What do they think of us? What they do they think about our God? Because unless we understand their hearts, we will not know how we can also reach out to them. But most of the time, even Christians are guilty of this. We isolate ourselves from the world. The, the Bible tells us we have been set apart, but we are not isolated. Amen? We don't segregate ourselves from, God, from, from the world. We have been set apart. That means even if we are in the world, we know that we are being set apart for the holiness of God. But it doesn't mean that we lose our connection to the world, that we do not need to communicate with the world. And most of Christians are like this. When we, when we look at our marketplaces, when we look at our friends, they are unbelievers. Yes, they have wrong principles. They sometimes... Their, their, their principles are corrupted, but not all their principles are corrupted. There are things we also learn from them, yeah? especially in their expertise. Okay? But you know, when we are unfriendly, this brings to isolation and segregation. That means we are partial. In verse 5, we are partial in everything. It is not good to be partial to the wicked and so deprive the innocent of justice. Sabi po dito. 
And so that's why most of the people that are judgmental, there are people who who are unfriendly. <laughs> why? Kasi maliit lang po at konti lang ang idea nila about tao. And they they feel like man is perfect, man should be like this, man should be like that. But the more we integrate ourselves, the more na tayo po ay ay nakikipag-connect sa iba, we get to realize that man has a lot of weakness. And their weakness is not just bound because they want to do things, but there are some reasons why they are like this, why they make this such of decisions. They have traumas. There are things of the past. They, are, they, they have the lack of trust. Marami pong mga, mga ideas. May ma, mga, maraming mga reasons. But when we don't get out in our comfort zone and get to mingle with them, get to know them better, we will not know anything about them. We cannot get close to them. And we cannot build relationship. And worse is that we will never learn in our lives. We will not learn. In verse 6 to 8, it says, The lips of fools bring them strife, and their mouth invite a beating. The mouths of fools are their undoing, and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip, alike gossip, are choice morsels, and they go down to the inmost spots. You see, when people who are friendly, when they speak to others, Unknowingly, they will not know. They will always speak about themselves. They will always speak of what they feel what is right. And they will not just speak about this, but they will insist on it. But when we talk about integration, we should never stand in the point of view of what is wrong and right, especially in sharing. Why sometimes they are fearful when we are unfriendly and isolated, we are so fearful on groups. We are very fearful on gatherings. Kasi nga po, natatakot po tayo to voice what we think is, what we, we, vo we voice what we feel about something. Bakit po? Because there is this constant fear of judgment too. Why? Because when we talk with others, you are also full of judgment. We talk to people according to what they say and according to how they speak. But even in our lives, we are very afraid to speak because also, ayo din po natin na, na, na marong or we feel like when we are sharing and other people's, other people has different view on our views, we feel like people are going against us. Okay? Have you ever felt that Pag, pag tayo po ay nakikipag-usap, minsan, nag, <laughs> lalo na po sa mga lasing, okay? Minsan, bakit may nagtatagaan? Bakit po may nag, alam niyo yun, nag, nag, naghahabulan ng mga lasing? Kasi alam niyo po, pag naglalasing yung mga tao, lumalabas lahat ng mga selfish desires nila, yung mga pride nila and everything, they begin to boast against each other. And what happens? Okay. Dahil nga po, hindi sila tugma yung inisip ng iba sa'yo. Sometimes, dun po nagsimula yung tagaan, yung awayan. And same is true even as in our ordinary conversations. Sometimes po kasi, when we think, when we hear other people is not with our view or magkaiba po tayo ng view, we think like they are attacking us. They are offending us. But the thing is, in communication, we get to be open on each other's feelings. We get to be open on each other's view. It's not about insisting what we want to say or insisting that what we, our view is right and they are wrong. But to integrate is to get to know each other, to know the heart of one another. It's not about the right or wrong, but we get to know each other by knowing kung ano yung standpoint nila. In some views, like in the in their standpoint about Israel and, and Hamas today, marami pong makakaibang viewpoints. But it doesn't mean that yours is right, theirs is wrong, or theirs is right and we are wrong. But we are humans. We think. We don't think the same. Amen? We don't think the same. But in our communication 
and integration. The most important thing is that it's not about the right or wrong, but we building relationships sa bawat isa. Maintindihan po natin saan po yung pinanggagalingan nila. Why do they think this way? Why do they do this? And without integration, hindi po natin ma-build up ang church ng Painon. We can never win people. We can never know how we could win people in our lives. And so that's why in verse 6 to 8, sabi po dito, the words, bakit po minsan we segregate ourselves and isolate ourselves? It is because of pride and boasting. Because madalas, when we talk to each other, we want na tayo yung my last say. We want na tayo yung pinaka-best yung sinabi or yung oo-o lahat sila. Okay? But again, to share and to integrate ourselves is not about right or wrong, but being able to let yourself, you know, be integrated. To know them and let, and you be known by them. To let them know you. To let them hear. And so that's why we converse. There should be now judgment. Amen? And we need to know that when we talk with each other, verse 10 tells us, suddenly, you know, sabi po dito, is it just inserted? <laughs> the name of the Lord is fortified tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Why is suddenly the, 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 the teacher of this proverb just put this one? And I was thinking, Lord, bakit parang nawawala ang word na ito? But I realized that in building relationship, in integration, we need to understand that God is there to intervene. Sometimes we have fear to connect, to integrate, especially as Christians. Yeah? But we need to understand that we have a God that rules over our relationship. We have a God that intervenes. We have a God that whenever we break through, you know, break all our fears in, in connecting with people. He's a God who will guide us and lead us. Amen? And so that's why we need to understand that when we build relationship, let us not be afraid. Let us not be afraid to lay down our pride. Let us not be afraid to take down walls and barriers, all the fears in our lives. Because we know that relationship matters to God. And that when we are trying to integrate ourselves and build relationship, God will come and guide us and lead us in our relationship. And let us take down the walls. In verse 11, it says, The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it a wall too high to scale. You see why sometimes men isolate themselves? Because sometimes, yeah, because of pride. Because we boast ourselves of what we have. And we think we can live on our own. Because we have the wealth, we have the intelligence, we have the capability. Sometimes we're building the walls. And we isolate ourselves. And we think that we are the ones, the best. We are already, alam nyo yun. But, you know, in, in God, we need to learn to love and trust. We need to learn to, you know, even in sharing, you can share about your weakness. Na, na, have you ever observed in some conversation, especially in our conversations po sa labas, when we converse, ang tono ng pananalita natin, ay wala ka sa lolo ko, ay ako din, ay mas lalo ako. Sometimes, pa, payabangan or pataasan. But you know, in verse 11, we come to see that all these walls, we try to portray ourselves, we try to pretend, we try to just say about our strengths, it will build walls among people. But if we learn to share, if we are not afraid to integrate and share our weakness, we will draw more people to us. But if we are proud, we are boasting people, not easy for us to really have friends. People just say, oh, we are introvert, kaya wala ako masyadong friend. No. It's just that you're unfriendly. In our lives, we are really unfriendly. And in some points sa ating buhay, meron po tayong ganito. And that is our first point. And now we are entering in the second paragraph, the second paragraph, which is in verse 12 to 24. How could we deal with unfriendliness? 
How can we deal with segregation? Verse 12 says, Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. Before a downfall, before man fails and be destroyed, man's heart is haughty. Pride and boasting destroys men. But what takes and you know takes us away from destruction, especially destruction of relationship and destroying ourselves, being our, on our own, is humility. It says is humility comes before honor. When we humble ourselves, we don't need to honor ourselves by simply being right always. When we are humble, when people think people honor us, this is how the world thinks. When they, they think they can only gain honor and glory when they be, take pride and boast of what they have accomplished, what they are, who they are in their lives. But the word of God says, and we can never defy this, that humility comes before honor. First, we are being honored by God when we are humble. And secondly, people will honor us when we are humble. Have we ever heard people, Oy, ang galing talaga niyan, napakahambog niyan eh. No. But people appreciate humility. When we learn to lay down ourselves, when we learn to stoop down in the level of others, God will honor us. Remember the word of God says, God resisted the proud and gives grace to the humble. Amen? Pag tayo po, we are willing to break the walls and integrate ourselves, break from all our barriers and our comfort zone. That means, alam niyo po yun, we die to ourselves, we die from all our judgment. We die from all, dapat ganito, dapat ganyan, bakit siya ganyan. We die from all these things. All our calculations. We die from all our fears. And we begin to integrate ourselves. And we learn to listen. We can learn to listen. We can learn to, to hear others. Because Sa ating buhay, if we are isolating ourselves, verse 13 tells us that to answer before listening, that is folly and shame. If we don't want to listen others, if we don't want to listen to others, kasi nga, ang feeling po natin, tayo lang ang tama. So we always want to be heard, gusto natin tayo palagi ang naririnig, but have we ever asked what others feel? What others feel about us, think about us, wh what do they think about even themselves of the issues. But when we just only speak and we do not listen, sabi po dito, it's fo folly, it's foolishness and shame. Because we don't know what we're speaking. Sometimes po, ang gagaling po natin magsalita, ay hindi, dapat, ano kristyano, dapat full of faith tayo, dapat magal, dapat, you know, hindi tayo nagpapag... We are very strong in talking with others. And so people, sometimes when they open to us as cell leaders, they open sa atin and they're sharing their weakness and we as a cell leader are very strong and we, we don't acknowledge what they, we always say, ay hindi dapat ganyan, dapat hindi ka pala mialamya, dapat yan, go go lang tayo kasi kristyano tayo and sometimes we are just, we are speaking but we don't listen. We don't know kung saan po sila nang gagaling. We don't know what they really feel, what they're experiencing. And you're comparing their experience to your experience, but you don't know because we don't listen. Kaya napaka-importante po that in integration, the number one goal is that we also listen. We listen and then we speak. And when we speak, we speak with grace. And we sh how can we humble ourselves? Is in verse 15, sabi po dito, the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge for the ears of the wise seek it out. The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge for the ears of the wise seek it out. The many times that when we speak and when we connect with others, 
especially when we, we also speak with our leaders. Our leaders will correct us. Our cell leaders, our pastors will come and comment on things in our lives, and they will also give instructions. But most of the time, these opinions, these advices doesn't go along with what we want to hear. But let us not be afraid to still connect and ask them. Because, you know, if we are wise, if we want to be wise in our lives, we need to seek knowledge. We need to learn to listen to others. And, you know, by hearing and listening to others, now we widen yung horizon po natin. That's why, for me, you know, one thing that I really desire is to always sit with Pastor Danny, sit with Pastor Joshua. Every time I come to meet them, my, my number one purpose is to sit with them and to just listen. Just listen. Whether sa sermonan po ako, pagagalitan ako, or they would appreciate my work, or they will instruct me on what I do. And most importantly, I want their comments. I, I want ano yung mga negative feedbacks po nila. Because this is how I learn. This is how I can grow. I don't need so much of praises. I don't need so much po nung mga, nung mga good things. I really want to know what am I doing wrong. Because no one can say it. But unless one can say it, I will not know. Because we as men, one thing, we are so selfish. It is not easy for us to see our mistakes. It is when others say it that we can begin to mirror ourselves. That we can begin to see ourselves in the other point of view. And we come to reflect. We come to know more of ourselves. But when we always listen to our own selves, our own thinking, our own feelings, then I tell you, we will never learn. We will never develop ourselves. But we learn to, to, to hear from others, especially our leaders. I tell you, listen to your leaders. Because they will never tell something that will go against you. That will be for your destruction. They will always want the best for you. And so, we need to be like this. So that we can open our hearts. We can be open ourselves to instruction and comments. It doesn't mean they are offending. It doesn't mean they're going against you. But they're speaking the truth. And once we know the truth, the truth will set us free. And so our hearts should be discerning of knowledge. And our ears be wise to seek out knowledge. Amen? We need to, to do this. And that's why I entitled this chapter, Be Humble. Connect and be blessed. Be humble, connect, and be blessed. Because in verse 15, you know, for us, when we learn to be open to others' ideas, we can grow. We need to understand. We learn from each other. We can receive correction, correction and we can receive care and love. I don't know why people are so afraid. There are times when we are... We have traumas on relationship. But let us not stop ourselves from relating with others. Because to relate has always a benefit. And we learn. We grow ourselves. In every experience, good or bad experience po natin sa tao, we always grow. Amen? Let us not be afraid. We may have bad experiences with men. But we understand this in relationship, we learn. We grow. See, even Jesus has a very, very bad experience with men. But it doesn't stop him from integrating. It doesn't stop him from forgiving, accepting, embracing one another. And this is a blessing when we connect with each other. We are not just the ones loving, but we can also receive love. We can also receive care because we are willing to open ourselves, you know, and we can grow ourselves. In verse 17 tells us, In a lawsuit, the first to speak seems right until someone comes forward and cross-examines. So that's why, sabi ko nga kanina, we will never know if we are right or wrong unless we hear others. 
we will never know if what we're thinking is the best. It is the right thing to do unless we also listen. That's why I really appreciate those people who are trying to make decisions in their life, but they inquire of us. Because that means they are willing. They are willing to, to, to follow what God wants them to do. So we must learn to listen, especially to our leaders, our elders. And you know, suddenly in verse 21, it says here, the tongue has the power, uh, 22, he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Suddenly this verse just pops in and talk about relationship. Suddenly the, the, the writer says, a, the one who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. What does it mean? What does it say to our times? Husbands, also listen to your wives. Hear your wives out. Because as husbands, we always, we have this good intention. And we are strong enough to deliver those decisions in our lives. And we think, you know, we, we know the best. We already know everything. But listen to your wife. Because your wife will come to tell you some of your decisions are wrong. Some, or even your decisions, there is far better. Or do not be afraid when your wife will comment on you or your wife will speak about what things to needed to be improved in your life. Because verse 20 says, whoever finds a, good, a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Mapalad po ang mga may asawa dahil nga po, you have a partner. Bago pa po kayo mapulaan sa labas. You have a partner who is trying to cover you. Who is trying to help you be a better man. And so sometimes, we, we need to really integrate. We, not sometimes, always we need to integrate with the wife. Bakit po kayo wife at hindi husband ang sinabi po dito? Because most of the time, men are cavemen. Men are the ones always isolating themselves. Whenever they have a problem, sinasarili po nila yun. Whenever they have a problem, they go on basketball. Kaya po lang basketball buong araw. If they have a problem, there's something in, our, in their mind. They have challenges in work, in the family, whatever issues. You know, they go on their own. And they play all the, the mobile games. They do something on their own. This is how men does it. But women, they don't do it. Pag ang babae may problem, what do they do? Nagkukumpulan po sila. Uy, mari, tara. Usap tayo. Uy, manicure naman tayo. And then they all, they talk about anything. And they begin to pour out what they feel. That's why the higher percentage of suicide is among men and not among women. Because the women has a way out. Meron po silang outlet. But men, you... We usually isolate ourselves. We are called cavemen. But that's why those who are married, those who have wives, you are so blessed to have a wife. And you need to allow your wife to hear, listen. Kahit mabunga nga pa po yung asawa po natin. Because you know, our wives will always want the best for us. Kaya nga napangasawa ka niya. That's why you choose her. I hope you choose her because you know that he is the right and the best partner for you. And so, in verse 22, it really impacts me. I was asking, Lord, bakit suddenly you spoke about wife? It's because men, we love to isolate ourselves. But you need to allow your wife to help you. Speak with your wife. Kahit man po feeling natin, Hindi nakakatulong ang wife natin. They may not know so much about our work. But just try them. And you'll come to see. Your wife, you married the most intelligent woman for you. And because they know you more, they want the best for you. And you know, when, pag nakapasa ka po sa mata niya, makakapasa ka sa mata ng mga tao. Because bago pa man po makita ng tao ang weakness mo, it is your wife who will first see it and he will first 
share it to you and correct you maybe. And so that's why we need to be willing to listen. And so, verse 21 tells us the tongue has a power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Very important that for us, we need to communicate. Amen. How can we integrate ourselves? Our words, our tongue is very important. Kaya nga po, it also has the ability, the power of life is in the power of the tongue because the way we communicate to others, this can bid, give life or destroy life. But most importantly, we learn to communicate. We learn to integrate ourselves and this will bring life po sa lahat ng ating gagawin. And so I hope brothers and sisters, today we we'll learn. Let us be humble and integrate ourselves. To communicate, to integrate is not about who is right or wrong, who is the most magaling, but being able to embrace each other even in our weakness, to be able to build ourselves up, build each other up. Amen. And this is the purpose of relationship. And I pray that we hear, we receive it and the Holy Spirit helps us. Let us all pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you and we glorify your name. And we thank you, Father, for indeed you are the God whose, whose understanding, whose thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We thank you, Father, for God, you have given us the gift of friendship. You have given us the gift of relationship. You never want us to isolate ourselves, to be on our own. But God, you you made relationship. Even you made relationship with us. Dying yourself in the cross, putting down your kingship and came here in this world for the sake of men that we can come to relate with you, Father. Experience you. Speak with you, Father. You are not the God who speaks from afar, but you are the God who speaks here and you sent your son Jesus so that we can walk with him, speak with him, share our hearts to him. And even now, we have your spirit. Father, we thank you. For Lord, you have blessed us not to be just on our own, but you bless us with many people around us, with many people, different and unique people. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this. But most of the time, God, we don't get to appreciate. Appreciate all these things. Because, God, we choose to isolate ourselves. We choose to allow ourselves, our fear of relationship, to take over. Brothers and sisters, today, as I was praying, God is impressing in my heart. Some of us has challenges and struggle in relationship. Most of our relationships, Minsan, we keep quiet. We shut ourselves from the world. We shut ourselves from others. When it's time of sharing, we are afraid to share what we feel, what we think. Whenever new people come and try to befriend us, sometimes we put our walls, we have walls around us that we cannot share ourselves. We cannot, we cannot reach out to them. And sometimes we also hate ourselves for this. We want to have friends, but we do not know how to get out from our cave, from our isolation. Today, brothers and sisters, God wants to heal you. All these things that we feel, some of this, it is because of our past friends. God is impressing my heart. Some of us were hurt in our previous relationship. That's why it is not easy for us to trust again. Most of the hurts that we have received in the past was when the people that are close to us. Because the closer the people get to us, the hurt and the more painful they give us when relationships are broken. There are people whom we trust but they betrayed us. We are afraid because there are sometimes in some conversations that you were sharing yourself, 
napahiya ka. Because people offend you of what they said. And you begin to shut your mouth. There are times when you were young, you were, some of you, are expressing yourself to your parents. But your parents cannot acknowledge what you say. And they will always say to you, you need to shut up. Because you are young, bata ka, you don't know what you're saying, you don't know what you're doing. And we hear these words in the past. Whenever we speak ourselves, that time na ikaw ay nasugatan, and you, you, you come to your parents and you show, and you want to, to be comforted. You, you, you spoke about what you felt and you want to be comforted by them, but instead, pinalo ka. Instead, pinagalitan ka. And beginning then, you begin to withdraw yourself. Whenever something happens to you, it's not easy for you to open up yourself, to share your struggle, to share your weakness. Because you were afraid in your spirit, unknowingly, there is this fear of rejection. There is fear that you'll be ignored just like when you were young. Today, brothers and sisters, God wants to heal you. God is stretching forth His hand and He's touching that wound, even that wound when you are young, the wound of your memory when you were young, all the hurts and the pains, the bitterness in the past. You can just surrender it all to God. All our fears, all our calculations, all our mistrust, all the negative memories in the past relationships. Today, we can surrender to God and say to the Lord, Lord, I surrender it to you. I give you all my pains. I give you all my hurts. I give you all my negative thoughts, all my lack of trust. Lord Jesus, I pray that you heal every heart, heal every wound, oh Lord, and that God begin to embrace them because they are your people. Embrace them, Father, in times that they have been rejected and ignored. God, we know that you are, you are with them. You never leave nor forsake them, Father. And you listen to them. You listen to them. The Lord says even in his words, As of me, as of me. And I can give you whatever you want. He is a God who listens. We acknowledge what we feel who feels more for us than anyone else. Today, receive the Father's love. Receive the comfort of God. Thank you, Jesus. You take away all their fears. Take away all their fears. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And allow them, Lord, to break free from all the walls. Break free from all the worlds, Jesus. And Lord, today we also come and ask for forgiveness. When, when we isolate ourselves, Lord, sometimes, God, we let our fear rule over us. We let the lies of the enemy to control us. And God, sometimes we take pride and boast on what we can do. Lord, sometimes when we communicate, it is not easy for us to listen and acknowledge others' feelings too, Father. Lord, today, forgive us. Forgive us that we dwell in our own thinking and beliefs. And we don't open ourselves to listen, to hear others. We want ourselves to be heard, but we don't hear and listen others. Father Jesus, I pray today to help us. Help us, O oh God. Touch our hearts. For you said, O oh Lord, in verse, in verse 12, before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. And verse 15 says, The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it out. God, we want to have the heart that is humble enough. We want a heart that is seeking of knowledge, a heart and an ear that is not close to others. But Lord, we pray, we will no longer dwell with our own thinking, our own world, but we get to open ourselves to others, to love others, to hear others out, Father. And we will not be afraid to communicate. We will not be afraid to integrate ourselves, Father, because this is where 
in relationship, this is where your presence comes. Because your, self, your word says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. And there you set your presence, even life forevermore. For God, you desire relationship. And Lord God, today we break all the fears, we break all the, the, the walls that we built, all the things, all the segregation and division in our relationship, all the spirit of unforgiveness, all these negative things the enemy is trying to bring, O oh Lord, in our lives. Father, even the spirit of isolation, even the fear of rejection, but today may you set us free from all our cave, from our isolation, Father, that we begin to connect with you, to receive your love, to build a true relationship from you and receive this love and trust that we can love and also trust others, Father, in our lives. Father, I thank you. I pray today that you bless every relationship that we have and continue to be glorified, O oh Lord, that God, as we are willing to break through all the barriers in our relationship. Father, we know your blessings come upon us. And even, Lord, I pray for every wives and husband watching today, may they receive, Lord, this life of integration. They are for each other and learn, to learn from each other and build up each other, Father. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. And God, we pray for Israel, Lord, and Palestine today that God may this relationship, Lord, may you be able to come and to break the division, to break the separation, break, Lord, all the hostility that comes from the enemy, and that God, may you become the center in the relationship, reign upon them, let your peace reign, and that God, may you build their relationship, even every nation today. Lord, we hear the words, we hear Lord, how they, they, they separate and divide, Painon, dahil sa pagkakampi-kampi, Painon, of who is right, Israel or Palestine. But Lord God, today, the nations need you. Make us one in your righteousness, in your truth. That God, we can be united in peace. We can be united to pursue, Father, your heart to pursue peace in your eyes, Father. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. May you heal every life. May you heal every broken relationship and nations, Father, that, God, we can be united in you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your blessing. And this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless, boy, and see you again tomorrow.